Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing this question called container with most water. And I think it's quite a popular question that I've seen a few times. And yeah, it's it looks quite intimidating with all the graph pictures and everything, but uh, the idea of it is somewhat simple. And let's just get straight to it. So you're given an integer array of height of length and I mean, just n number of uh, uh, and n length of items, and each represents the height of the poles. And yeah, basically, we need to find the first two lines. That uh, we need, we just need to find two lines that uh that form the container such that the container contains the most water. Well, so to find the maximum amount of water a container can store. Uh, we just need to find a systematic way of comparing across everything. And there's some approaches that like in a brute force mindset might come to you, like basically choose one and then choose another combination, see like every single combination possible and get the highest out of it. But as you probably know, the brute force method usually doesn't work, but it kind of helps us guide our thought process. So in this sense, how it guides us is that we need to find the right balance between the length, like the index distance between the two points and the minimum of the two containers heights. That is the constraints that we have. So to combat this, the solution that uh, I'm presenting today is one that involves two pointers. And yeah, it's, it's a solution that involves two pointers and finding out the fine balance between if we're finding a systematic way to solve this question. So we'll start at the maximum. We will put one pointer here and one pointer here, and we'll compare the, these two. These two, the volume will be somewhere here. Like the volume of it will be here because the, the minimum of the poles is here. While the width of the tank is large, the height of it is low because we need to pick the minimum of the two poles selected. And if we go to the next one, uh, the next one will be long. So what we will do is we look at these two poles and we see which one would it be more beneficial to shift away from. This is the lower one. It will be more beneficial to shift away from and go here. We will go and pick this and this will be the largest of the poles. And it just happens to be the largest of all the poles. But basically, we'll shift here and we'll see. Now we have this and this. Now the minimum height is here and the length, the index distance is also large. So this is a potential contender for the largest possible volume. So, but we don't just stop there because we want to systematically go through everything. What if there's like one pole that's just like this, that, that goes to like Everest or something. And it's like just so massive, even though the distance between the index is small, the height is just so much, so much more massive that it doesn't really affect. So we need to find a way to systematically eliminate every possibility. So to do that, we have this and we have this. Out of these two, the smaller one is this. So we might actually see something better if we move forward. So we move forward. Too bad we saw something worse. Hence, the volume is here. We go to the next one. We see this. Uh, both of them are equal now. We, we can choose to move either one. We move this here. And we record this as the volume. Basically, we record all these things and find the maximum out of all the different volumes that we have sketched out at every point of time. Then we move here. This will be the volume. Then we move here. This will be the volume. Then we move here. This will be the volume. So it, by doing this systematically, we kind of see every possibility of a best case possible to find the maximum volume. And that way, we, uh, we kind of... Um, yeah, that way we only see the best case item. Uh, and so out of all the different combinations that we see, we find that this combination is the best and hence we return that values answer. So how do we write this in code? So some people might visualize better in code. So basically we need two points. One is a left pointer, which will be zero and a right pointer, which will be height minus one. And we need a while loop to compare against. But before that, let me just put a max, a max as my variable to keep track of the maximum value. I don't need to create an array to keep track of all of it. I just need to keep a variable to keep track of the maximum. 
So anyways, the while loop will terminate itself if the left and right go out of balance. Like if the left is all of a sudden larger than right, that means it has overtaken the right's index. And yeah, that is not right. I mean, that's not correct. So what is going to happen is uh, while left is smaller than right, we compare, we, we try to find the volume, the present volume of items. So the present volume of items is a mix between the index distance, like the between the two index, what is the distance? Multiplied by, uh, multiplied by the minimum of the pole's height. So I achieve this by doing this, minimum of the pole's heights. Something like this. So we have height R and height L. And the minimum of this, maybe I'll put a bracket here to make it clear. The minimum of this, like in this case, this or this, this will be the lowest one. And that will be the height of the container that if we choose those two as the poles. And RL will be this minus this index. And that'll be volume. And we can just put this in the maxer. Just keep track of the max. So max, max it's by itself, and the new volume that you have seen. And we just return maxer. So this should be the solution. Uh, ah, I made a mistake. So this is going to give me a time limit error now because left and right is not getting modified. It's just staying the same. So it'll be forever stuck in the while loop and hence it's a time loop, time limit error. So what? how do I actually traverse? Uh, how do I actually move the left and right on what condition? I change it based on which is the losing one. If it's if this is the losing one, we shift it away. If this is the losing one, shift it away. So if height R is greater than height L. That means L is the losing one. L is the losing side. So left side will increase by one. If left is not the losing side, the right must decrease by one. Like uh, the right must come towards the center and the left, like both must come towards the center. If it's right, left side, we'll add one. If it's right side, we minus one. That way we kind of have a equilibrium. Like we, that way we can have a working while loop and it doesn't get stuck inside. And thankfully we cleared the test cases without any errors as well. You can think of other conditions as well. Like when you are ideating with the interviewer, we can maybe like talk about what if this negative is, what if this zero is somewhere, how does it behave differently? You can just think about the possibilities. But this in itself is an optimal solution because we try to see what is the maximum, like the try what is the optimal position for at each stage. Like we move based on optimality. If this is already the largest, why would I want to shift away from the largest? I would want to shift away from the smallest item. Smaller item. So this is a small item shifting. I want smaller move away from the small item. I'll shift away. And at this stage, there's a potential conflict. Like maybe the index is like maybe this combination is bigger than this. So that kind of circumstance could happen if the poles are really long. If the poles are like way bigger, it might offset the index's capability to increase the score. So just some things to take note of in that front. But uh, let's submit this. Hopefully, no issues. Mm, yep. So we beat by 90% of Python users and memory space. It's decent. Uh, for this question, I'm not too sure why the memory, like I tried it previously as well. It gave me like, like it's not bad, but it's just, it's not like this. So I was wondering why it's giving that. And I couldn't find an answer. If you guys know, maybe you could let me know. But in terms of time complexity wise, it's already quite efficient because we are not uh, seeing the same height, like same index again through this method. So effectively we are moving at O and time complexity. Like we only see each element, each index one time. Like we don't go back and forth. So in that sense, this is a very time efficient algorithm, but for memory space, I think it's just a small optimization of how I name the variables or how I arrange this thing or something. So yeah, uh, happy to learn more if anyone has spotted or any, has any feedback on how this could be improved. But that is my solution for container with most water and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.